Hello, I am Jenny McKenna with McKenna Property Management. Today is March 5th, 2020, and we are going to be walking the property at 8336 Granite Peak. Uh, not a lot that we need to do on this property, but I will get detailed on some of my opinions and some things that I see. First thing off is we like the maturity of the landscaping, however, it needs some cleanup. So we are starting to get some of our warm temperatures where the weeds like to come up through the rocks. We wanna make sure all of that gets cleaned out, trees trimmed, shrubs trimmed, so that our front curb appeal looks great. Um, one thing I like about this property is the previous seller has painted the exterior. So all of the um, outside has a nice fresh coat of paint. I do like the way this walks into the front door. A lot of times you're just gonna see a straight walkway. In this case, it kind of curves. It leaves a little planting over here. Um, they put some additional tile blocks over here. So this has actually added a little personality, which I really like. We discussed a little bit in my uh, analysis that we do need to get locking mechanisms for these security doors. So they right now just have a flat panel. We're gonna want to put a deadbolt on this and we're gonna do the deadbolt on the other security door. That deadbolt will match the front door keys as well as the garage key. That way the tenant can just have one key to use all of this. But this is something that is a nice security factor. So without a lock, it doesn't make much sense. So we definitely wanna get that locked. As we come inside, you're going to be greeted with what I think is kind of cool. You're going to have a guest bedroom and a guest bath right in your entry. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here for uh, bedroom number one. We are going to put rice paper on that um, arched window. Actually, it has an arch, a circular window, port window. And then this one's going to have blinds. Everywhere you see a window that is just a normal window is going to have two and a half inch faux wood white horizontal blinds. And having them be white is going to be ideal because of our baseboards and our ceiling, our door trim. All that's white, so it's going to make your windows really pop. Love this idea of a walk-in closet in a guest room. So even though the room is, is relatively on the smaller side, having this as a walk-in closet is ideal. And then this bedroom, i.e. if it's a guest bedroom, has the ability to have a bathroom right next door. So we are gonna need a shower rod. Also, I want to put a little disclosure. So this shower and this tub look phenomenal. They look practically brand spanking new. But what they have done is they have put some kind of coating on the original ceramic tile. I do not know the longevity of what this coating is. So it looks fantastic right now. It may look fantastic for seven more years. However, in a situation where this bathroom maybe gets a lot of showering, a lot of humidity, um, moisture. This may not hold up very well. So I just want to put it on video, put it on note, that this has been touched up per se, and we may end up needing to do something maintenance wise as the years go on. We are gonna to need to get a drain stopper, that is for sure. So we are missing a drain stopper. Toilets, faucets, countertops, Painted cabinets all look great. Light fixture is amazing. I am gonna request that we put those um, handles here on each of the cabinets. The reason for it is as I touch a cabinet with my oils on my hands, I'm actually gonna cause more damage and dirt. If I have a handle on it, I'm gonna save this uh, paint job on this cabinet for many more years. So we're gonna add those to all the freshly painted uh, cabinets. As we come in through here, it leads you into more of what the main living area is. We'll start in the kitchen. Kitchen has some really nice wow factors. They've done quartz solid um, countertop here. Uh, very modern, very hip, very clean looking. We've also got the stainless steel appliances which are upgraded. So not only stainless steel, but actually an upgraded version of it. And then we have our stainless steel sink. Notice when they painted the cabinets, they put on new hinges. Thank you, that is ideal. We also have this super cool modern light that, that really is bright and makes you feel good and lots to be able to be seen. We are gonna do a blind that is set back with this window so that we can still use the shelf. 
And then in here, this again is where we're going to want to put those handles. So the handle goes here and the handle goes here. We're not going to want to put handles on the Lazy Susan, nor do we want to put handles on these pop-out drawers. There's no reason to put a handle on the two cabinets that are above the fridge, which we are going to need to install a fridge. So a fridge um, here, stainless steel is what I recommend. Hopefully something that doesn't have an ice maker or water in the door. We want to make sure that the elements of what can break is minimal, but we do want to get a good size stainless steel fridge. I'd say 23 cubic um, is a minimum, so we want it to actually be a house fridge. Other than that, the kitchen is amazing. We've got um, a little bit of pantry here into this breakfast nook area, and they've got nice upgraded light. We are going to want to put blinds on that window. And then what's kind of cool is you will be led in through here, which is your washer dryer. So washer and dryers have a tendency to be loud, and the fact that it's on the far end of the house is kind of ideal. You do go through the washer and dryer in the laundry room to go to the garage, and we are going to need to install a washer dryer. This cabinet does not need a cabinet uh, handle, so we can leave that just the way that it is. Dryer can be electric or gas. So if you want to go a little less expensive initially, you can go electric dryer. And then of course, installing a new uh, washer is going to enable us to have new hoses, making sure that there's no leaks and that we can uh, fortify anything that is behind the washer. Now we're going to go into the garage. And believe it or not, there are some things that do need to be done in this garage. Traditionally, if you've ever watched a video of mine, I usually say, I don't care about a garage. Nobody rents a house because of a garage. In this case, there's some weird things going on that we want to just not have anybody see. When I first looked at this garage door, the first thing that came to my mind is I thought this was crap. And nobody's going to want to rent a house that has like sprayed on crap. So whether it is or it isn't, it's not a feeling that we want from a potential tenant. So what I am recommending is that we paint this garage door. And there's also a little bit of cake graffiti over here. So just getting it painted is gonna be nice. We have a hole that for, I have no idea why other than storage, anybody would have done that, but we need to get that sealed off. And then we have this weird funky cabinet that is usable, but it makes you feel like it's just a little scary. It kind of brings you back to the true age of the property. I don't think that enhances our rental value, so I believe this should be removed. So a few things in this garage that need to be done, and we do need to do a blind, but we can do an aluminum cheaper blind on that window um, if for cost and budget purposes. One of the nice things is it looks like the seller is leaving extra paint, exterior paint, wall paint, baseboard paint, so all of that's going to be great for any future touch-ups. So that is our garage. We will now come through and take a look at what I consider the living room. So here in this living room, they supply us with a brand new um, ceiling fan with a remote that we will mount on the wall. We are going to need to get blinds on these three windows. We do not need a blind on that French door. Once you close the security door, you really have it um, the purpose of privacy and it doesn't let in a lot of light. So we don't, I don't believe that we're going to need to add the expense of doing a blind on that security door. We do have a little bit of, um, we need a little TLC, let's say, on these fireplace glass doors. The glass doors look great, the fireplace looks great, but they are not in the track. If I don't have those in the track, I can guarantee you the tenants are going to break them. It will be an accident, but they will swing open and they will break, and that is a very costly thing. Tenants don't think they need to pay for it. Obviously, as an owner, you're like, why the heck should I pay for something the tenant broke? So rather than that, let's make sure we get that secured so that we don't have to worry about that. Um, other than that, I think that's all we have in this living room. Going out to the back, there is a uh, um, weather stripping that got tied up on here. It's like, it, it's either broken, ripped off, or curled under. So I've asked John to put a new 
weather stripping um, on the bottom of this door. This is the secondary security door. Again, they took off the deadbolt. We're gonna want one on here. That's the purpose of a whole security door. But the nice thing about this backyard, there's nothing out here that can be killed. <laughs> there's nothing that we need to water. So we get to utilize what the neighbors have already planted to give us a little bit of a feeling of a peaceful backyard. And then notice too, that they painted the brick wall to match the pop-outs on this house. So this house has no exposed fascia, so you do not have to worry about painting the wood fascia at any time. You've got brand new little pop-outs that they've painted, and then they added this color to blend all of this really nicely. So those are a couple things that a lot of people aren't gonna be able to match in other rentals that this rental offers. All right, so now we are gonna head into bedroom two and the master. So as we go in through here, there's one thing we do want to mention. We are going to need to do a light janitorial on this flooring. The flooring is great, but it's had a lot of traffic. So we're going to want to do a light janitorial in here, make sure that we freshen up the flooring, as well as, you know, just kind of clean out the master shower, make sure that the mirrors all look good. So there will need to be a slight janitorial done. In this bedroom, we just have the two windows that need the blinds. Um, but again, notice the nice vaulted ceilings. Notice the walk-in closet again. So something that you don't normally get in this size of a house, you are being offered, and I think that that's really cool. More than likely, this will become, if they don't have children that need this as a room, this would become an ideal office because it's closest to your master and the living room and allowing the guests to be a little farther from where the master is. We will put handles on these two cabinets so that it matches the rest of the house. And then now you are going to be in a master that I think is set up pretty darn cool. So this is where they're intending the bed to go. So lots of natural light. Of course, we will get blinds on all the windows. Walk-in closet over here, ceiling fan, vaulted ceilings, um, and then a true door as you go into the master bathroom. So a lot of people don't realize that in the newer houses, nowadays they're just doing this nice big arch and there's no door. So if you've got a husband that wakes up in the morning or doesn't want to wake up in the morning, one or the other, uh, their schedule's a little different, you don't have any way of shutting off the light to your bathroom if you don't have a door. So the fact that this has a door and it opens up this way is great because now the entire bathroom is your usable square footage. So in here we will put the handles. We've got some really nice overhead lights. I like them, they're bright. We have a medicine mirror, so you still have some storage there that's on the other side of the toilet. And then the unique thing for this square footage, you normally would only get a shower or you would get a tub shower combo. But in this particular floor plan, you get a separate shower and you get the actual tub. Now in this shower, they did the same thing they did in the guest bathroom. So they have sprayed the original ceramic, sorry, yeah, the original ceramic tile, and I'm just not sure how long it's gonna last. Some of the things that you can see here is see how the overflow dripped on this pan? That's how I know that this has been sprayed. So it looks great for now. Again, I'm just disclosing, I don't know what the longevity um, is on a fix like this. I'm hoping that with modern technology and with everything they've got now, you spray it on an existing ceramic tile and it'll stay there for years. We are gonna wanna do some cleanup on that janitorial, not only inside, but also on the exterior here, and then as much as we can on the door so that we can freshen it up. One thing that I did notice, and I'm putting it on the video just so that nobody thinks that this happened afterwards, we have water damage on this cabinet. So over here, this is had some kind of water damage, and I'm not sure if it's coming from what would have been an overflow of a tub or what would have been from a faucet. Um, more than likely, that is not anything we need to worry about at this time. It's not even something you can really see unless you're inside the tub. 
Um, we could put a nice strip of baseboard on it if we wanted to. Sure. So a nice baseboard strip right there just so that we can kind of take away from the ugliness of the side of that cabinet. But again, um, really, really nice house. So once I think this gets on the market, it shouldn't take us very long at all to identify a really good tenant. And then there's just like John said, maybe a day's worth of work that needs to be done on this. So it should be a quick turnaround as well. So very, very good investment.